What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Explore USA RV Supercenter in Corpus Christi, Texas. And we're gonna take a look at this really cool Astoria fifth wheel. Now this is a mid bunk and you guys know me, I am a big fan of mid bunks, but I've yet to see this specific mid bunk. And I'm really interested to see what they've done because you know me, I'm pretty critical on these things. So let's take a look at this unit, see what it's like on the inside. We'll come out to the outside and uh, I'll give you my overall impressions. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at the numbers. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,000 pounds, has a dry weight of 11,240 pounds. This has a cargo capacity of 2,700 pounds. So it's got a pretty high cargo capacity considering its gross vehicle weight rating. Rides on twin 6,000 pound axles, and it has, where are our tires here? E-rated 16 inch tires. So right off the bat, I would prefer to see 7,000 pound axles, and I'd prefer to see a slightly higher load rated tire on this unit. That said though, you don't really need it. I would definitely upgrade the tires. I don't care what they are. I definitely upgrade the tires. Um, but in terms of the axle capacity of 12,000 pounds worth of axle capacity, which certainly exceeds the dry weight of the vehicle, even considering the fact that you're going to be transferring about 2,000 of those pounds to the vehicle that's towing it. So you're really only going to have in the 9,000 pound range of dry weight over 14 or sorry over 12,000 pound axles and even when everything's completely loaded up you'll probably have a maximum of maybe 11,000 pounds over those axles that said just like a pickup truck and I've mentioned this in other videos before the axles on your trailer are essentially the equivalent to the rear axles of a pickup truck the front axle of your trailer is the back axle of your pickup truck and just like a pickup truck not one axle is designed to carry the entire weight of the vehicle so when you look at RVs, you have to look at it that way. Your axles, tires on an RV are only designed to carry the weight that's resting on them at any given time. The front of your RV is going to transfer a significant amount of weight to the back of your pickup truck, which acts as the front axle of your RV. So just want you to think about that because I always get comments wondering why the axle capacity doesn't match the gross vehicle weight rating. Go look at your vehicle outside and look at the axle rating and you'll see that your axle rating on your pickup truck does not match the entire gross vehicle weight rating in terms of your single axle. Anyways, we're going to start on the inside of this unit, then we'll hop back out and take a look at the outside. This has the Kurt Rotoflex pin box. It's basically this big rubber bushing here, and this rotates. Helps reduce chucking, helps reduce vibration from the, the actual road transferring to the vehicle. Same type of pin box that you see on really expensive, like Van Lee beacons, things like that. This has auto leveling, I believe, but it's the four-point auto leveling system which it is it has the ground control electric auto leveling system so it doesn't have the two center stabilization jacks more ride step above steps let's take a look in this dutchman astoria 3553 mbp all right nice friction hinge door which i like coming inside so check this out very nice light tones you know, a lot of people, when they buy an RV, this is kind of the look they eventually want to have. They have darker tones, and they want to go to this lighter tone, so they end up painting everything. But this has really, really nice tones. It feels really light and airy. I could easily see this kind of positioned out on a nice piece of property. Very nice. Just inside of it, you'd feel really, really airy, really open and wide. And you have huge windows. So you have a lot of windows, very indicative of this type of floor plan. But you have a lot of them, and they're spaced out to where you have a lot of light coming in. Like if I stand back to right here, you can see just about all the windows from this one spot and all the light that actually floods in, which is really nice. Nice simplistic valances above as well. You have your theater seating right here. You have a kind of a love seat back here. It has some really like slopey centers to it, which means this center right here kind of sticks up kind of high. That's interesting. I think I would have preferred your standard kind of love seat here. Back here you have your end tables with some nice storage underneath them right there. You have power USB on both of them so you can charge your phones and your tablets and all that stuff. Over here you have your Jensen TV in place. I like the trim going around the slides as well. Nice panoramic fireplace. You have your nice solid surface countertop here, and I believe there's a light strip under here that makes this glow as well. Very interesting color choice for the faucet. It's nice, it's the same faucet we actually have in our fifth wheel, but yeah, they kind of went with this really interesting copper tone. Then you have a nice single basin stainless steel sink. 
a lot of drawers around it. Not soft closing, but at this price point, you typically don't see that, to be honest. You have a gas electric refrigerator in here as well. Which is actually kind of interesting, to be honest, because, you know, you're seeing a lot of RV brands move away from gas electric to 12 volt. And one of the perks of the gas electric is it's a little bit shallower. But, um, yeah, I'd love to know why some manufacturers are still going with this when they could go to the 12 volt refrigerators. A nice graystone three burner cooktop. This is very similar to the one that we have in our RV, along with the graystone microwave. It's a residential microwave. Again, pretty much the same one we have. You have some more storage here. You have a nice little power center right there as well. Interesting storage right here. I don't like that at all. That's especially when it's not trimmed off on top. That to me looks looks a little tacky. If I bought this unit, that would be one of the first things I'd rip out and replace it with maybe like a faux brick design. Because that, that's more like a countertop material, in my opinion, and not a backsplash material. Could just be me, though. What do you guys think? All right, so we got some storage here. Let's take a look at the price first. So this has an MSRP of $108,358. Sale price on this, I can imagine, is going to be significantly less than that. But just kind of lets you know how high prices have gone. Because this unit, I'm going to say before COVID, probably would have, I hate to say it, probably would have had an MSRP in the 60s. Nice pantry space right here. The nice pantry space down here as well. All right, and you got your booth style dinette over here with storage underneath both sides. And this also does turn into a bed. You got your blackout blinds here as well, which I really like. Air conditioning controls. Let's take a look inside of the mid bunk. All right. So first thing to notice is that we got some wallboard. Oh, okay, so the batten strip has come off here. They've taken the batten strip off, so they're probably working on this unit. But this is the mid bunk space. This converts into a bed for you. You have your storage right down here, and then you have more storage in here and up here as well. Ceiling heights in here are probably about 6'2". And you can see how the slide comes off the wall quite a bit right here because it has the cable driven slide system. All right, let's walk up the stairs and see the loft above the mid bunk. So this is a slightly smaller loft than I'm used to. It looks to be maybe a full size loft. Looks like you have some storage way over there. You have some USB power up here. You have a little ladder to get you inside of it. You have your control center for all your slides, lighting, water heater, all that stuff, plus your awnings, and some more light switches down here. Now the bathroom on this unit is something to behold. I mean, this is nice. Really, really nice bathroom. That's all your winterization stuff that they pumped out of the shower. But yeah, this thing is, is really nice. A lot of room in the shower, porcelain foot flush toilet, dual basin, dual sinks, I'm sorry, dual vanities. Um, yeah, really nice, especially the dual vanities. That's really nice. Big, big bathroom. Very non-traditional to see in a mid bunk, to be honest with you. All right, coming into the bedroom. All right, so now we're here in the bedroom. This is a king size bed. It's probably an RV king, which is about four, five, six inches narrower than a standard king, but it is a king size bed. Nice trimming all the way around it. Again, nice and airy. I like the contrasting crown molding. You got an AC up here as well. Nice large window in here. You got your TV already mounted. Also, you have some nice drawers down here. So a good amount of storage. Nice closet space up front. And I like the nightstands. I like them a lot, actually. Those nightstands are nightstands that other RV manufacturers should copy because those are super nice. All right, and here, maybe washer and dryer space. You do. So this would have to be a combo unit, not a stackable. You'd have to get that one and all unit that does everything together because you don't have enough height to be able to put a stackable unit in here. So you'd want to put a single combo unit that does both. Not as efficient. Um, you know, it's kind of hit or miss to be honest with you. And the other thing you might have to do is measure your door opening right here. 
because you may not have enough room to squeeze all of them through here, even though you may have enough room inside of the space there. And some people actually have to remove the wall right here, this section to be able to get it through. So make sure if you're considering a unit or any RV and you want to put a washer and dryer, at minimum, you may have to remove the door. Um, but if it really comes down to it, you may actually have to remove this whole threshold right here if you want to get it through. So if you don't want to do that, you have to make sure that you have width between here and here to fit whatever you're going to put in your, your uh, washer and dryer space. Huge window right here. It's kind of unexpected. Lost a lot of light in, but that's a gigantic window. Very cool. Anyways, let's step outside this unit and see what it's all about. Okay, so we're going to start from the front, work our way back. Um, right off the bat, one thing I want to point out and kind of mention is that this does have an upgraded pin box to it. At this price point, or at least at this type of unit, in terms of class-wise, you typically wouldn't get that. You typically have a standard pin box, but yeah, this has an upgraded pin box. Again, electric leveling. You're going to have your propane cans in here. 30-pound propane can, which is really nice. Then in your front storage, reasonably thin but pretty dense doors. It would have been nice to see a thicker door. A lot of space down here. Like more space than I really would have thought. Really, really large space. You can fit a lot there. It does not have a drop frame. That's why you see this piece right here kind of protruding up out of the floor. If we look underneath it, we'll see that it rides on a 12-inch I-beam frame. So it's got a good frame and it's a solid beam. And there's an argument to be made that you have less chance of a frame failure if you have just a solid straight beam versus a drop beam that's welded to a main beam. You have your outside furnace. This is your Moride step above steps. Tires on this unit are high spec tires. No upgraded equalizer. It does have the reinforcements though, and you're starting to see that pretty much on all the frames. And when I say the reinforcements, I'm not, not really talking about that one. I'm talking about that V bracket inside of the actual shackle mounts because uh, that tended to be a failure point on RVs. So it's nice that LCI is addressing that. And even on their lower end units, you're starting to see that, that reinforcement. Cable driven slide, you have two awnings. You have an electric awning here with lighting and you also have one here with an LED light strip beneath it. Okay. Coming back this way, I really can't get to the back of this unit, so I'm going to go around to the other side. Now maybe I can squeeze through here. Okay, all LED lighting. It does have a 2-inch receiver hitch back here, so you can put an accessory rack. Not designed to tow. You have a 50-amp connection right here, since you have two AC units in here. You have your fresh water connection, another cable-driven slide. This is going to be the outside of your refrigerator, since it is a gas-electric refrigerator. Another cable-driven slide for the mid-bunk. All cable-driven slides on this unit. Here's your water heater. And here's the other side of your basement storage. You can see your wet panel right here. Very simple wet panel. Not a lot going on with it. Has a spray port right there as well. And then you're gonna have your other propane can right here. Anyways, guys, what do you think about this unit? It's, a, it's certainly a nice looking interior. I'd have to say I love the color tones, really nice. Uh, some fit and finish issues with this specific one. And you know, overall though, it can sleep a lot of people. It's got a lot of interesting things going on with it. I like it overall if you're looking for a mid bunk. Um, you know, it's hard for me to say that I really like it because I think just like all the mid bunks I review that I, I kind of criticize a little bit, they could have done something a little bit more in the kitchen space to utilize the wall going into the mid bunk. But what do you guys think? Please leave a comment below. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.